Praise the Lord and good morning. We are the Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown, located at 6113 North 21st Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania 19138, serving the community for 120 years. Our service will begin today with Sister Lillian Miles, who will bring us the welcome. Following her will be announcements from our Deacon Ministry Chairman, Deacon Alan Brown. Then we will be blessed with a selection from our music ministry. After that, scripture and prayer. Following that, our preached word will be coming from one of our associate ministers, the Reverend Beulah Covington. Good morning, Corinthian, and welcome community family and friends. This is July 19th. Now I have some important information to give you today. Did you know that July is National Ice Cream Month? We can celebrate all day, every day, all month long. Now a history lesson. Augustus Jackson who was a free black man from Philadelphia, is credited with creating new recipes and a method for manufacturing ice cream so it could be sold in 1832. He's my man. He is known as the father of ice cream. He was also the chef for President Madison and his wife Dolly. Dolly served ice cream at the second inaugural reception. Mr. Jackson died a wealthy man. Many people bond over a bowl of ice cream like Mrs. Alba Adams and I did. Vanilla is America's favorite, but some consumers like our lovable Coley's might consider a plant-based variety that can be found at Acme, ShopRite, and Fresh Grocer. But give me the good old high caloric rich haagen ice cream, especially rum raisin. Enjoy the flavor, wear your mask, and take care of yourself and each other. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown, friends and family. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you for joining with us this Sunday morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just a few announcements this morning. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone about the Grab and Go Mills. Um, it, it will be on Monday and Friday at 6100 North 21st Street and the parking lot. Again, the grab and go mills are Monday and Friday. It will be held at 6100 North 21st Street and the parking lot. And the time is from 11 until the food is gone. Uh, it's sponsored by City Councilwoman Cindy Bass, the Allegheny West Foundation, the Friends of David P. Richardson Committee, and Senator Sharif Street. Again, the free grab and go meals are on Monday and Friday, uh, 6100 North 21st Street in the parking lot. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'd like to remind everyone about our Wednesday prayer call. Uh, that starts at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. And to join in on the call, you can dial in at 605 313 Four one five nine, and the access code is seven one three three seven seven pound. Again, our Wednesday prayer service call is on Wednesdays at six p.m. And you can dial in at six zero five three one three four one five nine, and the access code is seven one three three. Seven, seven pound. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Um, Rite Aid has been conducting COVID-19 tests 
um, to get information about the COVID-19 testing that uh, Rite Aid is uh, having, you can go to their website at RiteAid.com. Again, that's RiteAid.com, R-I-T-E-A-I-D dot C-O-M, RiteAid.com, and get uh, detailed information uh, how you can get uh, a COVID-19 test. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. At this time, um, for our Sunday school lesson for this morning, it comes from Mark, the sixth chapter, verses one through six. Again, our Sunday school lesson for this morning comes from Mark, the first chap, the sixth chapter, verses one through six. Again, that's Mark, the sixth chapter verses 1 through 6, and the title for our Sunday School lesson this morning is The Wisdom of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Thank you. Thank you. For our scripture reading this morning, our scripture reading comes from 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Again, our scripture reading for this morning comes from 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Amen. The Lord's holy and righteous word. Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from, re from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have pro provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse, his sons, and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Elad and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance. But the Lord looks at the heart. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this one. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons be pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, There remains yet the youngest. And there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, but we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was Rudy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. That's the Lord's holy 
and righteous word that comes from 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy and righteous name. We thank you for yet another day, Father God. We thank you for your word, Father God. We love and we honor you, Father God. Be with those that are, uh, have unrest souls, that they seek your face, Father. Be with our sick and shut in, Father God. Be with all of us right now, Father God, as we uh, deal with this pandemic, Father God. Father God, we need you right now, Father. We love you and we honor you. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Morning, everyone. Again, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so happy again to come before you to expound on the word of the Lord. I thank him that he's able to bring us together again, hallelujah, through technology to fellowship with his word. As I come before you this morning, I come just praising God and thanking him for who he is. And let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you once more, God, for the opportunity to expound on your word, Father God, to lift up your holy and righteous name, Father God. God, I just glorify you and I magnify you, God, for who you are. You are still God. You sit high and you look low, Father God. God, I just ask in the name of Jesus that you hide me this morning behind the cross, God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God, the words that come out of my mouth, God, hallelujah, speak through me, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Songwriter says, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. So God, I ask that you use me this morning for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our scripture has been read this morning, and again, it was 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 13, and my focus verse this morning is Verse 7, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Verse 7, and I come to speak to you this morning just for a moment on don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a book by its cover. When we look at people, we see what we see. We look at the physical stature, height, weight, eyes, face, etc. These are outside features. Based on appearance, we assume, that we assume that people should be in a certain position. We make judgment calls as to what they should be or what they should not be. We listen to eloquent speech. We look at wealth, how some dress, and we say things like, you should be a model. You talk like a judge. You should be a politician. You sound like a preacher. Or you should be a preacher, teacher, or even a king. That's what we do based on what we see on the outside. We don't see the hidden beauty one may have. The reason we can't see below the surface is that that is to pass the outside appearance is because we can't see the heart of a person. Only God can see the heart. That is to say what really is the character of a man. Don't judge a book by its cover. Parents, we sometimes put our children in a box based on what we see on the outside. We say things like, you're not tall enough to, to do this. You're not you talkative enough to be a public speaker. We see what we see. We are surprised in life when the child or person we least expect to do something is the one who does just that. Again, don't judge book by its cover. Let's look at our text and our key verse. The key verse is, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his statue, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. King Saul was disobedient to God. 
Hallelujah. He didn't do all that God had told him to do. So God rejected him as king in chapter 15. God already had a replacement for the king. That was David, the young son of Jesse. When God makes a change, believe me, he doesn't half step. He made the change and he already had a replacement, somebody in place to take the king's place. He wasn't waiting because he knew what was coming down the line. So he was preparing a king for himself. The Lord said unto Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? How long are you going to grieve for him? He said, fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. In other words, God had selected a king for himself. God did, didn't give Samuel the name of the king, the person that he wanted or had chosen. I have found David of, of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. Acts 13, 22 and 1 Samuel 13, 14. Earlier, I said that sometimes we as parents put our children in a box because of how we look at them. Samuel did what the Lord told him to do. When Saul, when Samuel got to the house and, and went in and they went through the, the ceremony and they were, he's come to sacrifice unto the Lord, he said, I have found, I'm sorry, when Samuel looked at Eliab, which was the oldest brother, in verse 6, look at what Samuel said. Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Well, Samuel was looking at what Eliab looked like again on the outward appearance. Looking at what he saw. Samuel did the same thing that so many of us do today. We look at people. We look on the outside and then we make judgment calls from that. Good looking, tall in stature. Don't judge a book by its cover, but look at verse 7 when Samuel was in his mind that surely he said, the Lord's anointed is before him. And verse 7 said, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. The man for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. God's opinion about a person is different from the opinion that other people may have about that person. Seven of Jesse's sons passed before Samuel. The Lord did not choose any of them. In verse 10, we see that Samuel said unto Jesse, Do you have any more sons? Are there any more children? Because the Lord, the Lord has not chosen any of these. And, and he said, are there any other children? Jesse, Jesse said, yes, there was one more, the youngest, and he keep his sheep. Samuel said, get him and we will not sit down till he comes in. Remember I said how we treat our children sometimes based on how they look? This father didn't even think enough of David, his youngest son, to bring him in for the sacrificial ceremony, to be set aside for the works of the Lord. He didn't even think that his son would, should be considered. He's out there tending the sheep. That's what he does. Based on what he thought and saw of his sons, probably thought David was too young. But I'm here to tell you, when God has his hand on you, and when God has a work for you to do, and when God has anointed you for something, it doesn't matter what people think. What God has for you is for you. But God said, not so. He's not too young. When David came in, Scripture says he was good to look at. In other words, he was handsome. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him. Well, this is the one. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't you put people where you want them to be or take people from where you think they shouldn't be because of the outward appearance. Amen. What happened after that? Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. 
He was set apart and anointed to do the work of God. The Spirit of the Lord came upon David. From that day on, Samuel anointed him and did what the Lord said to do. The Lord had already set the person, uh, chose the person that he wanted to be king. Why? Because he looked at the heart. He looks at the character of people. He looks deeper than what we can see. He doesn't see just the outward appearance. Although David does not look like a king should look, he has the heart of a lion, a courageous spirit, and even more, a deep, unending love for God. He loved the Lord. He understood the Lord. He got God. Church, we must never forget that we are not called by man. We are called by God. We are not to judge, but let God do the judging. We want to put ourselves where God is, put ourselves in the seat of God. We want to make judgment calls on people based on what I see out of my eyes. Instead of saying, search my heart even, so. search my heart, Lord, and know me. Saul was tall and handsome and impressive looking man. Samuel may have been trying to find someone who looked like him. But God warned him about judging by appearance. Quality individuals are overlooked when this happens. When we judge by opinion and we look at somebody who, who, who we don't think should be in a certain ministry, in a certain position, and they have the qualifications not based on what they look like on the outside, they are overlooked. And God is not pleased with that. We don't see what's in their hearts. We don't have the wisdom that God has. We can't see below the surface. We see the outward appearance. We see the beauty. We see the pretty eyes. We see the well-dresser. We see the handsome man. We see the beautiful woman. But there's a song that was written by, and yes, the temptation, and it says, beauty's only skin deep. Hallelujah. You may be fine on the outside, but so unkind on the inside. God looks for character. God looks for someone who is going to do what it is that he wants to be done. Saul was tall and he was handsome. He was good looking. Hallelujah. But we know that that didn't matter to God. He didn't want to see what's on the outside. What are you going to do when I... Uh, 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 when you are put in the position of being king. That's what the Lord is concerned about. Are you going to do what I have sent you to do? Appearance does not tell the true story of what people are like. Mm. God judges by faith. He looks for good character. As I stated earlier, only God can see on the inside. Only he can accurately judge people. Don't judge a book by his cover. Hallelujah. Don't look at a person and say, oh, they'll never be able to do that. You're having a conversation with somebody. Oh, they'll never be able to do that. Just look at them. Mm -mm, they can't do that. They don't, they're not built for that. They don't have the looks for that. They don't have the actions for that. Their character is not what it should be in order to do what's needed here. We need somebody that looks like this. We need somebody with beautiful eyes. We need somebody with long flowing hair. And that's all you have, somebody with beautiful eyes and somebody with long flowing hair. You will not have a person, hallelujah, when the times get hard and when it gets rough, that they can stand up for the Lord and stand and defend the name of Jesus. We have a tendency to put people where we want them because we like them. That is not how God judges. That is not how God chooses. God looks for character in a person. He looks for love. He looks for great leadership qualities. He looks more than past what a person is doing today. He looks past what we see with our eyes. He looks inside of them. Search me, Lord, and know my heart. That is what God is looking for. That is what God wants. Hallelujah. He judges. He doesn't judge by the outward appearance. Because if he did like so many of us did, we would be in so much trouble. Just like people just put people somewhere because they're my friend. And because they just should, I say they should be in this position. Don't let people put you where God has not told you that you should be. Listen to the call of God. Be let God judge you. Don't worry about what people say. 
Hallelujah. I tell you, the songwriter wrote again, beauty's only skin deep. But I tell you, God judges heart deep. The hidden beauty only that he can see. Psalms 139, 23. Here are some qualities that David had. David was humble. Don't think of yourself more than what you ought to be. Humble yourself before the Lord. David knew he was a king, but hallelujah, even more than knowing he was a king, he knew he was a king who served the king. He knew that he served King Jesus. He knew that he was serving for God. He knew that he was not serving for David. He knew that God had anointed him and put him where he was. He knew the things that God had done for him before he became a king while he was in training and being prepared to be a king. He became a musician for Saul. He became a great warrior. And there's the great story of David and Goliath. Hallelujah. How the Lord when, 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 when David went and, and, and Jesse sent him up to take uh, lunch to the, to the men, the soldiers. And Goliath was up there talking about send me a worthy appoint opponent hallelujah and when jesse got there um, when uh, david got there and he was looking he was astounded at the at the fear that the army had and his brothers had hallelujah of, of goliath he said well i'll go i'll do it but he was going to defend the lord and he told that giant you come with to me with this gavel and things that you're going to use but i come in the name of the lord and i'm standing on his word and he wouldn't even put on the armor that saul had for him to put on where he said nope i'm clothed in the armor of god and we thank god david knew he was a king but he knew he who he served he also served the king david owned his faults in second samuel 12 had he had, we have to have faith in God, have courage, a leader must have courage, bravery, and fearlessness in spite of many dangers, hallelujah, a leader should be more courageous than his people, he should be just and fair, David felt that he was serving and ruling for God, he was not ruling for himself, he knew that God was in charge, he prayed, he went to God. He was a man at the God's own heart. He was a man at the God's own heart. David's kindness came from the heart of God. Hallelujah. This is what God is looking for in us, in leaders, in our churches. We have to get out of the way. Don't judge a book by its cover. Hallelujah. Listen to God. Be judged by him and not by people. Hallelujah, in the name of God, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise you today for what you've done, for what you're doing, God. God, in the name of Jesus, God, we are so sorry. We confess, Father God, and ask you forgive us, God, when we begin to judge people for who we think they are. God, when we begin to put them where we want them, God. God, I'm not letting you do what you do, Father God, because, God, you have full reign, Father God. You are in control, even with what's going on now. Just like you did it then, God, you are still God. God, you still have somebody in place, Father God, for what we need, God. We're going through, but, God, we want to put who we want to put, Father God, we look at and say what we say. He sounds like he looks like I don't like this because. But God, you say, stop looking on the outside and look at the heart, Father. And we glorify and magnify you, Father God, in the name of Jesus for searching our hearts, God. Searching researchers, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And if you find anything that shouldn't be, God, take it out and strengthen us, God, and use us every day for your glory, for your honor, God. We love you, Lord. And we magnify you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And we will now open the doors of the church. Hallelujah. You, Anyone, hallelujah, if you want to come on in and let God search your heart. Don't worry about what people think. Give your life to Jesus. Turn it over. Let him fix it for you. He will search your heart. He knows what's on your heart. Just come on in and accept him as your Savior. Lord, I'm a sinner and I want to be saved. There's nothing hard about accepting him. Don't try to get prepared. He wants you to come as you are. Hallelujah. We glorify you. We magnify you, Lord. And we thank you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. May the loving, hallelujah, the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, rest, rule, and abide with you forevermore.
Amen. We're so thankful you joined in our worship experience this morning. We know you were blessed by the message. We encourage you and we invite you to come again next week as we give praise and honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Until then, be blessed and stay safe.